Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the mysterious Carina Nebula. The nebula that's only visible from the southern hemisphere that also has some of the most insane mysteries in our galaxy. Today we're going to be talking about one such mystery of the exploded erupted star from about 170 years ago. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. If you're lucky enough to live in the Southern Hemisphere, you are probably quite familiar with, with this incredibly large, beautiful and massive structure known as Carina Nebula. Something that you can relatively easily see in the night skies of Southern Hemisphere. Unfortunately for us Northerners, it's just a dream to see this. But we have our own nebula, Orion Nebula. But it's only like four times as big as this beast. There are a lot of mysteries to talk about here, but today we're going to be focusing on one such thing that actually um, illuminated the night skies about 170 years ago, when one of the stars in this nebula had un undergone a very unusual event that wasn't really a supernova, but nevertheless ended up in a star eruption that released like 10 masses of uh, solar matter in a period of only a few months. Carina Nebula actually has several bright stars, and as a matter of fact, it has the brightest star in our galaxy, known as WR25. Um, it's one of the stars you see on the screen right now. I believe it's uh, the one on the right side, right here. Uh, but it, it also has a very, very interesting system um, of a nebula inside a nebula that has a very powerful star known as Eta Carina inside. We're going to be going to this star right now, and it's actually the star on the left. Um, if we were to come closer to it, we would realize that it's actually inside this very unusual planetary nebula known as the Homunculus Nebula. In other words, as you can see on your screen right now, there is a much smaller but unusually shaped nebula that's uh, surrounding this particular star system. We actually can't see that star very easily because the Homunculus Nebula has so much density that it covers the stars from our visual observation. So if you were to take a look at it with a telescope, this is actually what you would see. Um, something that has a very large kind of a cloud-like area with a very bright region in the middle where the stars are located. And if you were to look at this in more detail, you would actually start seeing these very unusual structures that um, essentially indicate to us that what happened here was a very, very large explosion so large that we actually haven't seen such an explosion since. In a nutshell, it was um, a supernova-like explosion, except that it was not a supernova. It was essentially a tremendously large expulsion of solar matter, um, total mass of about 10 masses of the sun. Now, I'm not going to show you just yet how this happened, because I wanted to create a separate video detailing the actual um, science behind how this occurred. But what we do understand about this is that back in like 1837, when this star actually got noticed for the first time, the explosion was so powerful and so bright that it actually turned into the second brightest star in our night sky. And uh, this event actually has a name. It was known as the Great Eruption of 1843. And um, interestingly, after this eruption, the star started to dim more and more and for the most part of the early 20th century, it was practically invisible. It was really, really hard to see because not only did it dim in the actual brightness, but the actual clouds from the Homunculus Nebula covered it, so it was pretty much impossible to see. But in the last few years, in the last few decades as a matter of fact, as you can see from this graph, the brightness of the star has actually been going up again. So as a matter of fact, in the last uh, century or so, it went from being one of the dimmest objects in the Carina Nebula to once again becoming brighter and brighter and brighter. Which is actually indicative of something unusual going on there and possibly maybe another event that might occur in the future. Or it's also possible that uh, the actual cloud of the nebula is slowly dissipating given uh, the actual light uh, a way to escape from the nebula and finally allowing us to see what the star looks like. 
Now, today we understand a lot more about this star. As a matter of fact, we now believe that it's not just a very large, massive egg-shaped object that you see on the screen right now. We now think that it's actually a binary system with a, another star orbiting around the more massive one every five and a half years. Uh, so because of this, there's actually slight changes in luminosity once in a while. But we also understand that it's very likely that this is the next candidate for a very, very large supernova that's going to occur anywhere from, I guess, tomorrow to maybe uh, three or so million years from now. Now, when the supernova occurs, it's going to be quite easily visible from pretty much everywhere in the southern hemisphere. But the only thing is that um, because this star is relatively far away, something like seven and a half thousand light years away from us, um, we have nothing to worry about. So in other words, it's not going to do anything to our planet, uh, but it is going to be very large, very powerful and very easily visible. As a matter of fact, most estimates today suggest that this is going to go supernova way before Betelgeuse or any other famous star. And because its actual current mass is somewhere around 250 masses of our own sun, way, way, way more massive than Betelgeuse, the uh, corresponding explosion or supernova is going to be tremendously more magnificent and a lot more explosive. And because this star actually has a companion, a relatively large um, old type star, about 30 masses of the sun, uh, it's possible that the explosion and the supernova that um, is created by the main star will probably push the secondary star out of the system and might even potentially create what's known as a rogue star, a star that basically speeds through the galaxy and eventually escapes into the outer intergalactic space. And because this beautiful star is so massive and so powerful, it also is responsible for producing quite a lot of lasers that are created uh, due to all of the uh, surrounding material. I've talked about this previously, so do check out the video on lasers if you don't really know how this works. And what's interesting here is that it's the only ultraviolet lasers we've detected so far. So, in other words, this beautiful star is capable of producing these really powerful ultraviolet lasers. But unfortunately, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, this star, and of course the nebula it's located in, is invisible. You have to go to the Southern Hemisphere to actually see any of this, and um, when this uh, beautiful supernova does occur, you'll have to travel. Assuming, of course, we're still around. It's possible that it happens in a few million years, and by then, maybe, just maybe, humanity is no longer in existence. But anyway, that's not really the point of this video. Let's actually finish this video here because I wanted to do another follow-up video where I explain to you how the Homunculus Nebula was born and what might happen when this beautiful star goes supernova in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon and share this video with someone who loves learning about space. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.